what is cracking people yes what's up shelly what is up shelly yo i have been waiting for this box the box finally came so we're gonna crack right into this it's kind of exciting let me just check on the face based side of things i am doing against my better judgment i am actually yo, multi-streaming this <laughs> because i just wanted to make sure that anybody in the ecamm community this is the kind of things that we as streamers use. But you know, look, I needed my hands free, not even using the mic, using the DJI. So let me know if the audio is okay. But here's a box. Let me get it right, y'all. Big old box. Ooh, let's not dox the self. Turn around the old address here. It is partially open, um, but I don't like to lose any fingers. So I will grab a blade. <laughs> Sometimes the little ropes that are being these things will mess you up. The postman was not very careful with that. Ooh. Dintinch. 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 Wow. Yes, Keely, I know. Okay, first things first. The box doesn't look damaged, but the postman took a little, uh, little hit with my box here. Okay, there's one. Let me put this red chill for a second and get the next one out. <clears throat> Yay! Okay. So, let's put these babies on and then hit us with an overhead shot. Overhead shot! This <laughs> is uh, like a, hey girl listen all right so here's here's my my two lights here uh this is my cold bore c-o-l-b-o-r cold bore cob light we've discussed cob lights on the channel before uh cob light basically means circuit on board once i get it out the box you'll understand and this is the cold bore cl60r the big difference between the R and the non-R is this one is white and this one is RGB. Actually, I believe it's RGBWW. That kind of makes a big deal. There's a difference. Let's engage this bad boy here. I have to do this because my friend Anna, she gets upset when the person's face is missing when you're talking. <laughs> so I'm just gonna, I think she's right. All right, so in the color version, we got a 65 watt cob light again, circuit on board, full RGB color, power cube design, matrix control, quiet operation, ultra compact. Basically the same rundown on this guy with the exception of the fact that it is only black and white. It states here that I need to get a cold bore studio app going on my phone. Boom. And then please scan to verify and activate the warranty. I like that. That's brilliant. All right. So, um, of course, these are like all cob lights made in China, mostly in Guangzhou. Guangzhou is a very um, common like lighting place. There's a place called Luan District. Um, when you go there, it's lots of LED people. So let's let's start with this one first, okay? So we're gonna pop this open. I have I saw these guys months ago on the stream. Um, you guys might remember a few months back on the stream, I was talking about these cold bore lights because of their size. I was really really intrigued by their size, right? And I watched a video from a guy named uh, Marcus Pix, that's his name, I believe. And from watching his video, I was super intrigued by him. And I was like, I've got to reach out to this company, whatever. But I went to NAB and I happened to see them in real life. I got to meet uh, Loki and the crew. And they were the nicest people ever. I, I dragged Sydney DeYoung's on and Donna did it. Like, I dragged them over to see it. I dragged uh, Mac and uh, Dylan to go check them out. And, yeah, they, Brandon came with us as well. They are a really nice company. 
they're uh, girls and they were just hustling. Like their their job it seems like they want to do a lot of cool stuff for the community. So I was it's like happy to meet them and then talking to them. I said, please send me out light the test, and they're like, absolutely. Okay. Uh, sorry for you, Sandy. Eleven thirty. <laughs> it's Friday though, and it's a long weekend, so you don't need no sleep. <laughs> All right, so first things first, let me move this box out of the way. Uh, I have to say, comes in a nice bag. I love it when it comes with a little Merce to carry your product in. All right, let me get a little overheaded action here. Let's, let's get it open. What's up, Buck Nasty? Yo, Tom, you will be the person responsible for paying attention to this view to see if your recommendations help. Doom, doom, doom. You know, this is funny, Tom. I, because I just was playing with this since the day it came out, I was using the little kit guy on there and, you know, cool, whatever. And the only reason why I got the kit version, when I bought the E1, it was available. Dude, I put my Tamron 17 to 28 on here. I have to run it at 28 because when you use the ZV-10 for so long, uh, where'd she go? She's over here somewhere. When you use the ZV-10 for so long to do your streams, you forget on a full faith camera that you're not working with the equivalents, but you're working with the real deal. So when I when I threw this on, I forgot that it's accurate. <laughs> okay. So I had that sucker at 17. Bruh, here, let me see this. Look, 17 is stupid wide. Hey, don't look at this. <laughs> 17 is stupid wide. I look like I'm in a Intergalactic, planetary, planetary, intergalactic. Eesh, eesh, eesh. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, it's it's funny when you've been streaming on APSC for so long. Uh, when you go back to full frame, you forget that it's the real deal, not the equivalency. Man, I'm missing the camera. I'm just looking to see where I put it so I don't accidentally knock it down. Oh, here it go. Here, there it is. I had this on there with the same lens. Same lens, but on the ZV E10, man, Sony, listen, come here. <laughs> Let's talk about these names that I have. The ZV-1, the ZV-E1, the ZV-E10, and there's something else. Oh, now there's a ZV-1 Mark II. Like, come on, people. You guys are, you guys are tripping. Yo, that 17, no, the 17 is just too much. Bro, look, it makes me look like even extra fat. I mean, I'm already fat, but good Lord. I look like, hi, this is Jabba the Hutt. You're a friendly neighborhood tech video dude. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's keep it clean though. All right, I'll, I'll leave it out a little bit just for Dave. All right, cool. So, Manuel, please read these things, people. Half the time, y'all be like, hey, doc, does it? You know what? Page two, mother... <laughs> Half the time... Is page two. Somebody just wanted to say hi on Facebook, and I can't see who it is. It's Laura. What up, LW? Girl, long time no see. Okay, reflector belt. I know half of you guys bought your lights, and you don't use these reflector belt. Um, in this particular case, we probably don't need it either, but when you use it bare, and you want a, that really extra bright intensity, you need the belt. That's what the belt is for. I myself probably won't use this either. I'll end up putting a modifier on it, but let's just put it back in the bell. Okay, there is a V-mount adapter plate. Now, other than Nanlite, not too many people shipping these bad boys with a V-mount adapter plate. Half the time you have to buy that as an accessory. So I appreciate that. All right, we're gonna take that, put it in the other box, the other, other box. Boom. This is a Bowens mount adapter, so that way you can use it as a Bowens mount. So we're going to keep that. Always important to have. This little thing on the end of the cable is known as a D-tap. When you see V-mount batteries, you'll see the little holes on the side. You don't know what they're for. They're for the D-tap. And this is the part that gets me excited. Okay, here's a little light brick. The light brick is USB-C, which is also kind of interesting. I wonder if my USB-C power supply has enough oomph to power this. I do have a 100 watt USB power supply, but I like the fact that the light does power from a USB-C cable. And this brick is some kind of mini watts. Um, 
please excuse me while I be old for a second. Ninety watts. So here's a ninety watt power supply USB C. Man, if you carry this on your trip, you can use this to charge your MacBook because it's ninety watts. Ninety watts at one point five amps. That should be enough to power. Actually, it puts out three amps on the output, so it's a pretty sweeping output. I mean, yeah, up convert. Okay. In here also is a little Handel. Let's get this open. I don't know. If I was me and I was watching somebody unbox these lights with their hands busy and I wanted to know how much they were, I would go to amazon.com and type in C-O-L-B-O-R-C-L-6-0 and then come back and teach everybody because my hands are busy. That's what I would do because I'm a nice netizen like that. All right, so here's the handle. Baby pin adapter on the top. So that's for your light, you know, and my baby pins are in the drawer. Do my baby pins, do my baby pins run this mother, hell yeah. I don't, where is my baby pin adapters? I know I have them. There it is. Okay. All right. So if I'm using a different type of stand, say I have to use a music stand or something like that, I, these are this is the baby pin looks like, right? There's a smaller version of these. Um, some people say it's a spigot, same various thing. So that's what this fits in. And then you crank this little do jammy down right here. Boom. That's it. Caleb is up late at night because I know that Katie would be asleep right now. <laughs> Yay, what's up, Clem? All right, anyway, so there's this. That's how it works if you have, you know, traditional lighty light stands. So um, once again, this is the Colbor, C-O-L-B-O-R 60R. That's what we're doing. Okay, let me get to the light. This is the part that had me so intrigued. You guys are not going to believe it. It was Paul, okay. You had me all the way food. This is what had me intrigued. Uh, these are crazy. Now, here's what's funny. Here's what's funny. Boom. Listen to this. Family, would you look at the size of this beast right here? Look at how tiny it is. It's just so cute. Ooh. Look at that, fam. Do I have my... um? Where is my measuring device? It belongs here, but something tells me that a real tour has come into my space and relieved my measuring tape from the premises. So let me give you something to think about. Uh, where, where, it, come on, brain cells. Ranger. Oh, my, my phone. My phone is over here. One second. Hi. Come here. There it is. iPhone 14 Pro Max. Colbor 60R. Fam, would you look at that? That, my friends, is tiny. That is also tiny, right? So you've seen bricks about your size. Look at that. I mean, why? if I had my measuring thing, I would square you up, but this, my friends, is tiny. Look, I do have one right here. Hold on. Let's get busy. All right, let's talk about it. Side to side. Three and a half inches wide. Three and a quarter inches wide. Yes, my, my, no, my self-healing pad has centimeter marks. And other than Keely, I didn't want to confuse everybody. But Rich, you on point, <laughs> right? Right? Hey, Claire, what it do? All right, so we're talking five and three quarters. Actually, five and a half. 
by three and a half family. And this don't weigh nothing. This is what had me so intrigued when I first saw the video. So let me put this little packing kit away. I'll put these other items that we don't need in here for a second and we'll come back to them later. I won't worry about the power supply at this moment because I believe I have a loose USB cable to which we can fire this baby up. This is going to get bright, but I just want to show y'all how crazy this is. I'm going to put my tools on the floor. Never mind that noise, it's just screws. And then this is a 100 watt power supply, so it should easily cover this. And I should switch this up. You double up because it might be bright. I wear my sunglasses at night. Okay, protector. Do I need to take it off? Yes, you do. Just slides right off. I like this too. I can, when I travel, I can put this back on, take it off. You can also use this as a shot glass in the pinch, right? So if you're having one of those kind of Fridays, you just get your McAllen's 12, pour it in here, get your little, your hit right, and then back to action. Okay. And if people just walk into the stream is going to be like, why he got on glasses? Listen, I got a question for y'all. How many of y'all still got your mini pearl papers on your products from when you first get them? I find it satisfying to de mini pearl it. Well, smell do. Oh. Some people leave these joints on until forever. Forever, ever? Yeah. So I took that off now. Let's go. Boom! That good look. Smoking off, off. Don't leave the plastic on there when you do it, that's dumb. Okay, that's gonna stink for a bit. Turn it off. Okay, no damage to the cob, thank goodness. When you get yours, remember to take this off. That was stupid. <laughs> okay, anyway, dude, check this baby out. It is bright. Now this is set at 2700, which we definitely don't want. Look how big the numbers are. So when you're Kathy, and you gotta set this joint from the ceiling. I know that my room is at 46. Look, they even have like small half stops on the Kelvin. So I know these front lights are at 46. So if I wanted my front lights and my back lights to match, I, I'm set. So if I was to just point this to the sky, look at how different, look at how different my, my camera angle is. Right? So, let me, uh, this is now, again, I'm just pointing it into the corner back here and having it reflect back, even realizing this monitor is actually blocking some of that. If I move the monitor, look at that. It just adds a different dimensionality to my space. So one thing that I talk to you guys about all the time is that you might not believe this, but I literally have like 18 lights popping in this room. So just throwing sun to the ceiling, my ceiling is white, right? I can change the whole overall look just by getting a little sun on the ceiling. Look, I could even point it at the uh, Vader back there. Yo, this is crazy. This is crazy. Okay, so let me go back to my set. So you have Bluetooth, you got your fan set for smart, comes on and comes off when necessary. Actually, let me do something here. Let me go back to get rid of that. Okay, we're going to crank the dim down. Look again, look how big the control numbers are. This is hard to see, but let me do this so it's easier for y'all. Look at the size of these numbers here. So you can crank it down pretty quick. I just wanna show you that this light 
if it goes down to 1%, which is something that's pretty rare nowadays. So even at 1%, look at how much bright. This is a 60 watt, guys. At 1%, it's still pretty glorious. This will make a fantastic hair light. I can't hold it back far enough. But look, it'll make a pretty good hair light. You just want that glow from behind. It's hard to do this. Um, but yeah, this is pretty impressive. Okay, so let me hear the fan. I have it off right now, so no biggie on the fan. Except for smart, that it will come on when necessary. This doesn't get very hot, but the cob itself is hot enough to melt this, but this is probably relatively low melt. The smell is going away. But I'm gonna show you the second part that I like about these. Give me a second to show you these once I get the other one open. The, the cold board has these interesting rails. I don't know if you can see this, but this rail fits into this style. So what that means is you might start out with 60, but then if something comes up later and you need extra, you can just slide it together and link them together. Now, these are only like 110 bucks. So yeah, kind of incredible for what they do. And before they catch on and everybody starts buying them and the, and the Amazon prices go up, if you need an extra light, need a fill light, need to get rid of that obnoxious ring light that you're working with, this right here. Fam, this is great. Let me uh, off this real quick. Let's get the other one open. Just seeing how, yes, there it is. You just put this baby on. There's your Bowens mount, should you need it. Very good, it just pops right into place. So if you need a Bowens mount, so you can mount, you know, whatever type of adapters on there, there's that. Super cool. And then, just by mounting this battery pack, for the V-mount right here. Now you just tighten this baby up and you could put a mini V-mount right on here and just have a small little thing. Man, Claire, can we talk about it? Girlfriend, can we talk about it? I don't know how ring lights ever became a thing. They are horrible. <laughs> they, they, they just make you look weird. And all the instant models went went Google over them because, you know, people said, hey, you need to get some professional lighting and them not knowing any better. The, the lighting industry people came out and started selling them ring lights. What they're really for in real like practical use in a professional space is they're normally used to shoot through. So you see them. <laughs> You see them often in CSI when they're checking out a body and they need to, you know, shoot evidence. They're shooting through a ring light. How they turned into the Instagram thing, bruh, they're not cool. Not cool. All right, so let's open up the second dude. While I do this real quick, let me uh, grab the app so we can get them connected up to the app. Because to me, I won't buy any new lights that don't give me control over here. Reason for it, if you're doing your stream, you're busy, you don't necessarily have time to, you know, try to change your lighting from some weird position or anything like that, right? Um, let's see, D DJ Rob is here, fam, fam, we're on YouTube, Rob. Where'd he go? I just, I just noticed that DJ Rob was here. Hey, hold on, DJ Rob, your comment didn't come through. That's weird, because DJ Rob said he been using the Amaran 60, but it didn't come through. Weird. Uh, Bishop is on Facebook. He came through. But yeah, super weird. Anyway, DJ Rob, thank you for that. He said he been using the Amaran 60. I wanted the Amaran 60s in white. Um, they look really dope. They're really, really dope. And I saw them in white. At the time, they were unavailable. And as I was looking for those, you know, the YouTube recommendation engine showed me this. I saw Marcus Picks, and I was like blown through the roof just for the tiny size. Because even the Amrans are tiny as well. Oh, yeah. Let me get this app real quick. Mm -hmm. So, by the way, gang, while I'm doing this, if you have any questions about tech or lighting or whatever, you're more than welcome to ask those babies. Because um, it's Friday. We ain't got no job. You ain't got shit to do. 
<laughs> yes, thank you, Glenda. Tell them, hit that like button that many times. Wait, it has to be an even number, Glenda, because if it's an odd number, it'll end back up off, if that makes any sense. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, so now the app is coming through. But yeah, I think you have to have app control on lights nowadays just because it makes it easier. And believe it or not, a lot of these apps will show up on an M1, M2, soon to be M3 computer because you can run iPad apps directly on the Mac. And if that's the case, you will oftentimes be able to run it on the Mac and then connect it to a stream deck and then control it. You know what I'm saying? Boom. Yes, this is the one. Rob, that's what sold, bruh. Besides the size, the fact that you can join them, that is what sold me on it. So I was so lucky when I was at NAB and I got the chance to meet them and I was talking to them and they were like, hey, we kind of need us an ambassador. And I'm like, I know somebody that fits that description. <laughs> it, I think it helped that I kept dragging all my friends back to the booth to go and see everything. So I had a chance to talk with them. And luckily, so I must say because of YouTube, uh, Coldboard did send me these lights, okay? Just so you know. Um, I believe this color one, I don't know if it's on the Amazon just yet. Let me look it up. C-O-L-B-O-R 60R. It's actually CL60R. And let's see, it did, it's on the Amazon now. Okay, good. So this guy for a color RGB is only $199. See, this is why I'm in, I'm in love with Cobor. So they're charging you like $120 for the black and white one. Not black and white, sorry, <laughs> for the black one. And they're charging you $199 for the color one. They are not making it like three X the price just to get a little splash of color. Okay, so everything in the kit is primarily the same. You got this same thing. You got a different size brick, probably because the color takes more power. Uh, this brick uses a, uh, there's a name for this. I call it Mickey Mouse. <laughs> so uh, there's a Mickey Mouse connector. And let's see the watts on this bad boy. Also 90 watts, okay, that's cool. So that'll work. And look, it still uses a USB. So here's what's cool about if you travel with these, right? Say you carry the power supply because you travel with these, you can use the same power supply to charge your computer, charge your camera, charge all kinds of things. There's 90 watts, you got more than enough power. You could even use this to power your USB uh, thingy. Handle, still in there. Uh, Mickey Mouse power cord, which is pretty long in here. Right, I don't. I, there is an actual name for this. It's a NEMA something, but I just call it a Mickey Mouse cord. Um, boom, boom, boom. Let's put those back. I don't need those. Uh, reflector is the same. Bowen's mount is the same. Let me grab the light. Again, the measurements are the same. They use literally the same body. However, what you'll notice is the difference because Happy Pride Month, people! Happy Pride Month. Look at that. Look at that. This one comes with a rubber protector because this cob is more expensive. And this time, <laughs> oh people, oh my God, hold this thought, hold this thought. Hold this thought right here. Look, it says, please remove this before use. <laughs> Anyway, exactly the same, right? Exactly the same. Kali is in the building. What is up, Twisted Chocolate Yogas? I will be in your hood in a week. Today. All right, so. <laughs> Gretchen, what, what you know about game? <laughs> right? Right? Uh 170, Victor says 179 on the Amazon business account. Gangster. I have one of that too. All right. So again, sizes are the same, identical. The color one, it might be hard to see with the lighting, but the color one is a little bit more space gray, whereas the other one is silver. Um, that's just because the light is so 
bright, the future so bright, had to wear these shades. You might be able to see it better here. This one's slightly darker. Okay, so now, look at here. Here's why I fell in love with these. <laughs> this, this is what DJ Rob was talking about a minute ago. You can join forces. You can Voltron these bad boys. Come on, come on, son. Come on. In the word of Ed Lover, come on, son. Look, you can go the opposite way, too, like this way. There we go. There's a little thing that they bite in. You can even do something psycho like this here. Man, I can't get my, my strength together. There we go. You can even send one each way. Like these are brilliant. 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 Did I say it again? And I like the fact that this one comes with a rubber cup. I'm going to probably have to go look at like a Hydra Flash or something and get extra rubber cups. I like this cup a little bit better than the whiskey glass. Um, I'm going to put this black and white one away for a second. Not black and white. I keep saying that. <laughs> the non-color one. And let's bust this out. Again, has the mini pro guy on the back. Let's get rid of that. Dang, this one's tight. Okay. Do not need that. And we don't need that. Standard issue anchor USB cable. Check the cob is clean. Boom. Fired up. Why you gotta be like that? Boom. Cobor 60R. And let me come over here. You'll see it has the same color CCT, that's when you're using a standard color, right? Let's come down to the dim. Let's lower it so we don't blind nobody. Let's put it on like 1%. And then the GM, that stands for a green magenta shift. Every once in a while, you'll get a light and the light will have an odd color. Like if you put it on and you look jaundiced, that means your light has a green shift. If you smart and you use something like this, to check your picture, hold on. If you use something like this to check your picture and then you look at what your picture looks like with an app like Monitor Plus or something where you can actually see the thing, or if I use my Shinobi, it will show me the color shift. If you see that the green light is over a couple, you just hit this and you roll it back until you get it even so that the skin tones and the green and magenta line up. So that's what that is about. And then, Let's go to mode real quick. Now I have it set for, you can see we got the hue, the saturation, and the intensity. But hopefully they use my same hue numbers that I always use. I'm, normally 288 is my purple. Let's see how good they are. Every company does something a little different. In this particular case, it looks like that's sort of on the red side. Oh, it's about right. I'm, I'm wrong. It's about right. It's just that I have it dimmed out so little. Oh, here's what's crazy. I don't know if you can see this. As I hit that and do this, there's a little line right here that's moving up and down the rainbow. So even have that, that pride sticker actually helps you get it to the color because you could be in that range. So I was right. My 288 is exactly what I do. And I only picked that color because my lucky numbers are two and eight. Okay, you can also use the app to do this. So let me set up the app right after I pop this on. But I'm going to go ahead and hit my, uh, my intensity. That is the exact same color. Now this corner won't be as dark as it usually is. Fam, would you look at that? Let's crank it up on full blast. I can, look at that, that back wall is now gonna be perfect. Because this is so light, 
I can hang it on the ceiling right next to my spacecraft up there. Right? I can highlight the fucking ficus. Say what's up to Steve. Yo, this, my friends, is Bennett. Look, I could even give it the so glow. Hey now, welcome to my personal sanctuary. This is Tim Meadows, a.k.a. the ladies' man. <laughs> so you can see, yo, these are fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. Um, wait, Claire was asking the question, and moderator Kevin came through. There you go. Got it. Do you have tips for folk like me shooting room with white walls? I'm in a rental, so I can't paint my walls. More light friendly color. Endlessly jealous of setups. Girl, have I got the thing for you. I have exactly what you need. Give me a second. All right. What kind of stand? I Man, uh, what kind of stand? You mean stands like Paul or, or light stand? <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, Paul. Don't come at me, bro. Um, these are so light. These are cool because they'll kind of work with anything. Um, I don't know what I did with that handle. But that's what's cool about these. These are super, super light. I'm not going to do it because it might fall out. But it is light enough that, look, I'm just literally holding it by the cable. I won't do that for prolonged use. <laughs> but these are super light. So these would be easy to mount with just about anything. What's cool about these rails is they're kind of a standard construction rail. So there's a bunch of stuff you can put in here. However, what I have been using is I have, as you can tell, I have drop ceilings right up there, right? I have these scissors. It's called an Alzo scissor. A-L-Z-O-C-E-I-L-I-N-G-S-C-I-S-S-O-R. Bam. And this is how I hang it from the ceiling. I can't fight this feeling anymore. Yeah, so these right here have been a game changer. So I have these on the ceilings and I have my 60 watt Nanlite connected to one and I have the, the 200 watt Nanlite connected to the other and I have my hair light right there, that little white dot you can see right about there, also connected to one. And I just use the, an extension pipe and that's it. So the super light, that's the best. But any light stand that uses these type of baby pins that you see here in this photograph. Photograph, I don't want ya. That's all you need to do. So anyone is, this was the expansion, expansion, the extension poles. So I have basically this connected to this from the ceiling and you're good to go. But these, I mean, these are super light and you'll be fine. If you don't have suspended ceilings like such, um, there's many other different ways you can get plates. If it's your house and you're allowed to drill into the ceiling, that'll work. But honestly, these are so light, you could actually make a plate. This is, all right, let me explain this to you. This is going to be funny. Look this up on YouTube. You can take a plate, like a piece of wood, and on the ceiling, you can cover it with painter's tape, right? So whatever the size of that shape is. The reason why I say you want a plate, you want it slightly bigger than this because more surface area. But let's say you were to take a 12 inch by 12 inch piece of wood where you can paint it already. On the back side, you cover it with painter's tape. On the ceiling where you want it to go, you cover it with painter's tape. You put CA glue, AKA crazy glue, AKA super glue, put it on there and stick it there. It'll be there, permanent, it's strong, it's not gonna fall down. When you're ready to move, all you gotta do is get the paint scraper just between the bottom layer of painter's tape and it'll just come right off. But it's so strong, we actually use that to hold wood onto the CNC when I'm cutting. It is a very strong hack and it makes things stick like you wouldn't believe, but it won't mess up your wall because it's painter's tape. Uh, look it up on YouTube, it's a handy, famous trick. And that's another way that you can mount things to your ceiling. If you're say like Claire, where you can't jack up the wall, it's a safe way to ha hang things without jacking up the wall. Okay, so let me show Claire what I was gonna show her, and then I'm gonna dip into this app, and we're gonna play with the app for a second. Boom, boom, boom. 
Uh-oh, Brady has looked it up. We can 3D print the rails. Ah, uh, here we go. Veripole. I don't know if you can see this, but right there with the purple light right next to Manchester United clock, that is a pole. That is a auto pole from Monfrotto. It's a professional version of a Veripole. Would an Arca Swiss plate fit into the slot? Now, she tried to challenge your mans like he ain't got no Arca Swiss plate. She know me. She know me. Come on, Gretchen. Nope, it don't fit. <laughs> that would be cool, though. It also would have been cool if, of all these cool railings and stuff they had, if they had one tiny little um, spot for a quarter 20. But I'm sure you could do that with the handle. The handle would probably, as a matter of fact, I know the handle covers it because I saw it. What do you mean, no kidding? It's a thing, man. It's a thing. Look it up. You will be amazed. It is a very, very strong process. It is kind of bananas. Oh, for attaching your... Oh, Kevin has these amazing 3D panels. Claire, this is also something you might look into. Kevin, Mr. Moderator Kevin, has these amazing printed 3D panels that have like a geodesic type texture. And... You could hang them with 3M, right? And because they're white, you could paint them, but they're flat white, they're not very reflective. So when Kevin adds his color lights, it gives the color texture to the wall. Okay, so let's do this. 18% gray paper. This, Claire, is gonna be your friend do this boom so you can get the Huawei seamless photo background paper 53 inches wide by 16 feet right what what, what kind of rain what what the heck the week what do you speak of boy <laughs> right so this paper, and if say you don't want gray, the reason why I said gray, Claire, is because as you can see, my walls are gray, but whatever color light I shine upon them, that's what color they become because they're 18% gray. It's a very specific gray. It's the gray that you find right here, right? So whatever color you shine upon thee, that is what color it becomes. It, it is perfect color to absorb color, not reflect color. And so it gives the, it gives that certain je ne sais quoi, right? But you'll notice they have these in Kali, <laughs> Samson Alexander, uh, yellow. They got bright orange. They got flame. Flame, I want to live forever, right? In case you want to do, um, you know, Asian dress look, uh, you got f what? For Cynthia, <laughs> yellow. <laughs> I know somebody named for Cynthia. <laughs> you got jet black, light blue, uh, Mardi Gras. Come on, people, with these names. This is a neutral gray. This is the one that you kind of want because it doesn't have any color cast. And then that'll work. You got Scarlet, Sky Blue, Stinger. That's how you pull off the green screen look. You got this, um, whatever color that is. That's a weird color. Oh, Thistle. Uh, thunder gray and then ultra black so pick one of those that would normally do it as long as you don't need the whole like i'm at this 17 millimeter right here um it's actually about 20 at this i would need two rolls because it's 54 inches wide the two 54s would cover that you just pull them down overlap it from a distance and with the um 2.8 you're not going to see the line um and then if i go like this where i compress it you wouldn't even see the line anyway, right? It'd be too far back there. So that would that would do it. That would do it. Paper. Paper is your answer. And since Amazon can send these papers out most places pretty free, um, it's a nice way to do it. Mm. I got these RGB lights and that was cool. <laughs> they don't work at all. No, it's just that the white walls will do it to you. Also, a lot of people attempt to start out with hue lights they don't do the same thing there's a different uh connection they also can cause flickering and they do weird stuff 
Uh, let me just check and see if anybody's on the face space. Is Anthony is on face space. That's where he is. Hey, Gabe. Man, I didn't see Gabe's comment either. So it's really weird that, um, yeah, Gabe's comment and DJ Rob's comment didn't pop through to this side. So strange. Um, oh, now Anthony is over here. <laughs> what is up, Ant? Good to see you, bro. Yes. Claire, see, if you join the Discord, both of them, Ecamm on and mine, you would hear these kind of things because I come up with these random goofball statements all the time. All right, so let's check out the application. Let's go. Cobor Studio would like access to the Bluetooth. I know what I should do. Let's do ourselves a solid real quick before we get into this. I have to tell it yes, but I need to come over and start NDI. Let's do that. Start the capture. Start the broadcast. All right, Coolio. Let's come hither and go here. Move the socks display. Pop. In the pimps in the crib, y'all. Pop it like a hot. All right, cool. So now we can do one of these. Go back, pop the app. It tells us you can set up scenes. This looks very much like the Nanlite app, which is kind of cool. Uh, add a fixture, adjust the intensity, okay. Uh, do your switches, slide. Oh, this is very easy. All right, so now we're done with all of this. Cool, so let's connect the light First, we need to, it's on. All right, cool. Let's crank the intensity up. Oh, I have it turned all the way off. <laughs> yes, the Nanlite app is a pain in the butt to get set up, but once it's set up, it is so much easier. Okay, so I just cranked on the light here. Maybe I should do this as well. No, no, not that. Okay, so we want to go to set. And then I like to always hit the Bluetooth reset just to get it fresh and new. I think it makes it easier. There's the first light. Okay. Off, on. This is just the dim rate. So if you put the dim rate on five, you can move quicker. Right? If you put the dim rate on one, you can move slower. Now I just got myself stuck. Let me stop messing with this. There you go. So I'll probably leave my dim rate on one. That's cool. Then you can make it flash. You can do fireworks. Somebody's going to have a siege. You can do faulty light bulb. Let's see. You can do police. Oh, man. Check this out. So you set it up so that when you get a super chat, instead of having stuff pop up on the screen, just have it fire the police light in the background. You know, they got all these cool special effects. Flickering TV, lightning flame, fireworks. Let's do flame. So in case you want to have like Christmas, 
and you want to have it connected with the Yule Log plan in the back, That's so crazy. That is so crazy. Okay, so we got that one. Let me plug back in the secondary one. And so we can get that one fired up on the channel too. More cable. We need more cable. Very cool. I like the fact that similar to the NAND lights back there, I can run them on USB-C. Cause that means you can run it off of, you know, super simple connections. Man, Marie X, can we talk about it, bro? Can we talk about it? My Citus Link app was driving me bananas. One of the things that it did that just drove me crazy the most is it kept disconnecting me and needing to like log in or some other crazy stuff. And it was irritating, bro. It was so irritating. I was I was so over them bad boys. It's not even funny. There we go. This cable, it don't like. <laughs> Let's cover that. It does not like that cable at all. Maybe I should just use the one to which it had came with. You gotta know that some of your cables will give you drama. It's just the way love goes. That's the one thing about USB-C, all cables is not created equal. <laughs> so if, when you find a dud for any reason, if it disconnects one of your things, just throw that cable away. Because more than likely that cable is going to muck up something and then you're going to be sad face panda. Yeah, this one ain't happy too. Let me just use this one. This 60 is not having fun right now. There we go. I got two cables that don't like. All right, so let me go back and add one more light to this particular scene. And hold on, I got a fire back up in the eye. It got angry when the phone went to sleep. All right, now we're cooking with Pam. So let me go ahead and add another light. Again, just hit the setting here. I always just like to do this Bluetooth reset thing. I find it works the best. Even like, like uh, Marine X was saying, man, I, I swear with the Citizen Link app, I was forever having to, <laughs> to do this stuff, man. It was crazy. That app drove me bananas. Okay, now that Bluetooth is reset. Go to communications. There it is. Uh-oh. <laughs> They're named the same thing. <laughs> All right. Let's see what that does. All right, so cool. I know which one is which. First thing I'm going to do is rename this one to CL60 and then do DL, daylight. Now I know which is which, okay? So I got that. Uh, this one has simple instructions. It's really about the intensity. There's not a lot of other stuff you're going to do. Um, you can get in here and you can mess with it. If you're doing it from a console, I can set it to weight, control my intensity here. I have basically same thing, intensity and, and uh, rate control. And you can even set it so these two are grouped together and this bottom slider would run both fixtures at the same time. I just have the other one unplugged at the moment. So 
bro, these are good to go. They're ready for me to throw it up in the ceiling and just get to town. So there you go. These babies are cool. So these are like uh, 110 to 120. You know, the price moves up and down according to the yuan or RMB, depending on where they, where they do their trading company. If their trading company is in mainland China, it'll be based off yuan. And uh, in Hong Kong, sometimes it'll do HKDs and sometimes they'll do RMB so that the price will fluctuate. But these are around 110, 120. And Victor said 179. I saw it 199. You could probably check a couple different sources. I would say make sure you're popping them from the Cobol store um, directly. And I will ping my my buddy Loki to see if she got a, a special something something for those you know people that get down with your mans. Um, yes, and this is so bad, <laughs> Claire. Let me explain you something, Miss Lady Girl. Speaking from experience, you get a cable that's kind of funny, and you're like, ah, uh, that's okay. I'm gonna just keep it. These things ain't, you know, come on. What you end up doing is plugging it into something important, and you hear the light go, and you, you know, it's like, see, I should have threw that cable away. If these ain't worth it. Half the time, the reason why they stop working is just how you wrap them. So I tend to do nice, light, even loops, and I tend to put cable ties on them, right, and put them in the drawer. I pack them the way they came in the box, and I have a drawer here full of cables. And so when you go to Amazon, right, and you're about to order something, what I always do is tack on a couple more cables. Here, let's give let's give Claire the the quick look here. This will be as many as I can grab in this one fell swoop. Okay, move this. So we got. I like to color coordinate my joints. These are all USB C cables. Every single one of them. All of them. <laughs> Wait, we're still going. We, we got more. We got more. What the hell are you waiting for? There you go. All USB-C cables. And the reason for them, again, I like to color code them. I like to use certain cables for certain things. So that way, when you look at your your wire mess, you know that the reds are pushing power, the grays are pushing sound, <laughs> the blacks are pushing light, you know what I mean? So like, that's that's what it do. And yeah, if you get a cable that's bad, as soon as you know it, throw it away. If you're not quite sure, just put a blue tape on it, or I have paint markers, uh, hit it with a white paint marker, just to say like, oh, this one's acting a little bit goofy. And then when brands send you things with these thick, unruly, like rubber cables that have no choice but to go straight. I normally 86 these right away and replace it. With something like this. It's soft. These fabrics doesn't tangle. You know what I mean? And they just better. So I like, you know, flexible. I, I try to get rid of, I get all fabric cables. It just keeps them, things get tangled when you don't use fabric cables. They just get all twisted up and look kind of psycho. All right, so let's, I'm going to work these bad boys into my system so kind of way. <laughs> yeah, are those cables even worth your time? No, that is the answer. As soon as you find a dud, get rid of it. it the funny one is like, you got a faulty iPhone cable and people just be like using that sucker even though it's kind of goofy. I'm like, you gonna mess around and blow up a fifteen hundred dollar phone, playing, <laughs> playing with those? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, uh, yeah. Over under wraps are for my XLR cables. I don't really do it with my USB cables. They're normally not that long. You need a cable drawer shot in your cabinet. Oh, that would be funny. Put a, a, the extra camera in there so you can see. Yeah. Oh yeah, I use daylight. For everything. The RGB is primarily for styling up the studio. But if you're doing portrait shots, 
product shots, the RGB is good for that. But for your general everyday stuff, the daylight would probably be the way to go. Good question, Gretchen. Let me check on my face space people over here. Boom. Yeah, I think that is the best way. Actually, I just buy them like that. <laughs> when I'm going to buy something on Amazon, um, cause like a two pack of braided, like decent quality will be like 16 bucks. So I'll just add it to the order. Um, yeah, just because I don't know, man, it's not all the, you know, the ones with that rubber thing on it, they get sticky, icky sometimes too, right? There's a chemical that's in this rubberized soft feel stuff. So like this DJI case has it on there right now. There's that soft feel stuff. If you pick up an old black plastic MacBook or, you know, I don't know if Victor is here, the Amiibos after they've been in your, in your drawer for a little bit, like they get that sticky thing. It's a weird soft feel texture that tech companies love to put on stuff. After a while, it's a petroleum based product. So the bitulum or bitulitum or whatever the hell it's called starts to come, butylin, there it is, starts to come out and it's all sticky. So you can clean it off with um, alcohol, but you gotta, you know, alcohol or acetone will get off. Be careful with acetone, sometimes it'll eat the plastic. But to me, like, I just don't like those cables. They get gummy. You have cables, you have power cords, especially power cords. In your old cable collection, when you go to grab it, it'll almost stick to your hands because the uh, petroleum-based stuff that's in the coating is dying. So just that's part of the PVC. So just throw that crap out. It's just not worth it. Yeah, just replace them. Yeah, alcohol, exactly. Clear, cleans up the gun. I can't stand that stuff. I am so glad that tech companies are kind of getting over that fake rubber texture, the soft feel. That junk is whack. When it gets old, it's disgusting. And it's like, ooh, it feels nasty. It feels nasty. Feel like you got like uh, pickle mango juice on your fingers. Only Hawaii people will understand that. <laughs> right, Troy? <laughs> All right, gang, uh, don't forget, sorry, no stream tomorrow. I'm going to be on the road doing uh, some filming at a Native Hawaiian art and culture event. So I'm going to miss out, but got a chance to kick it with y'all today. Do this quick unboxing and big ups to Cold Boar for sending me these amazing lights. As a matter of fact, let me pack these babies away nicely. I may have to take, I might have to take these joints with me to L.A., um, cause it'll look real good in our little studio that we're setting up for card party with Mr. Pat Flynn. So it might be worth a takeover. All right. So there's that pop it in there. I'm going to just have to label these two boxes like, uh, color version versus the RGB version. Mm -hmm. See wrong bag. They're the same, but the the which <laughs> the internals have been placed slightly differently, so it makes it easier to fit in the bag. There you go. Yes, these are cool. This will just fit right into my Pelican case, and then ready to go, ready to go. So yeah, if you guys are looking out. Uh, I'll put the links to the descriptions in here. And then I'll double check with my, my partner over there at Cobor to see if she has any special discounts for the Ecamm fam. I will post that in here as well. But uh, yeah, I think these are pretty dope. Definitely worth a look. If you're just getting started out, you're trying to upgrade your lights. That is one of the next best upgrades for most people is to do something about their lighting, especially if you're still sitting on Chrome with things like the little flat panel lights, right? That's some of the stuff that's helping degrade your photo. Um, you can just tell, right? It, it has a, a different look, you know what I mean? So you don't, you don't really want to deal with that. You want to come in looking pretty like cheerleader or model. You know what I'm saying? So get yourself a light upgrade. Boom. JFK, what it do? Thank you, Bish. Good to see you, man. It's been a minute. Hope everything is all good with you. 
uh, we're only in quick. It's like three, four day trip, whole entire ECAM team. We're just going to go do the event and get out of Dodge. <laughs> it's LA, ain't nothing to see. <laughs> we, especially non wise getting hot. <laughs> we're going to get in, do our event. It's in Anaheim and then we're going to get out and then come back. We got a lot of stuff coming up. We got to get ready for camp. Camp is going to be amazing. Again, if you haven't got your tickets already, Claire, are you coming to Creator Camp? Um, this is for you, because you said you're a, be a beginner. You should come to Creator Camp. It doesn't matter whether you're a beginner or a seasoned veteran. Creator Camp is going to be the business. We have, I want to say about 90% folks signed up. We have a couple slots left, but uh, man, Definitely get your butt to camp. Camp is going to be the bomb. I can't wait to see everybody there. It's going to be a blast. <laughs> no. Your flat panel <laughs> with parchment paper. Man, you taking it back, G. Because <laughs> in the beginning, that's how I started. The flat panels were just too harsh. So I used like um, Ross bags or... Uh, what's up, Alicia? I used Ross bags. I used... The tissue paper that comes when you buy a Mac, you know that that white plastic bag, boom, boom. Yeah, it's it's all Los Angeles to me. <laughs> yeah, camp is gonna be awesome. Come on, Dicky, you know it's on. We're taking shots, bro. We're taking shots. <laughs> Can't wait. Camp is gonna be the business. I already. Cleaned up my um, roadcaster. It's ready to pack into the little backpack. But look, it's all purdy and clean now. I made a video on how to clean your roadcaster in other gear. Maybe I'll not be lazy today and edit that sucker in Final Cut and post it. Because <laughs> that'll be good information. Now it is time to go out and shoot some pictures. Because I didn't shoot anything today. And I don't want to muck up my streak. So, peace out. A-Town stuff. <laughs> Mahalo Nui! <laughs>